Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> so I got a really interesting question on uh, Instagram recently. You know, honestly, I wish I knew the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed just through reading posts online and talking to different people that uh, your coming out story is quite different depending on your background. So that could be your regional background, your ethnicity, your culture. And something that I think shapes your coming out story a lot is religion. Say me, I grew up in New York, I'm a Chinese American. It's quite different, my experience is quite different from someone who maybe was born and raised in the Bible Belt. From what I found in my own experience, um, Asian culture is quite different from Western culture in that we are not as individualistic. There, you know, your life does not belong to only you. It also belongs to your family and to the society you belong to. And something that I grew up hearing is don't burden other people. The result is that homosexuality, being gay, is just simply not discussed. It wasn't discussed when I was growing up, at least. So like a lot of other gay men growing up, I also did not have a good relationship with my dad. Um, I think our fathers tend to want us to be manly boys and we were exactly not that. Um, my sister and I, I have a younger sister, who we would grow up and play with her dolls. So like the minute my mom left for work, we would go to her room, take out her dolls, and we would play like school or house or any of those other games. I remember we used to fight over this Hello Kitty doll. She, my sister really wanted her to be like the it girl and the prom queen, and I thought she was full of um, <laughs> So we'd fight over that. Keep in mind, we were like eight or nine years old at the time. I've since moved on to borrow body pillows. I wondered a lot growing up, why was it more masculine, you know? Um, because I'm pretty tall, my parents really urged me to play basketball, and I did not really care for sports and much rather play piano. And even in like first, second, third grade, like all the other boys seemed to love like dirty things, so like farts and loud noises and nasty smells. And I, I personally did not want to be a part of that. Um, I did not find that intriguing. I was a bit of a cleanliness nut actually as a kid. I would, if there was a single book like misheveled or like off place on my bookshelf, I'd be unable to sleep. I'd have to get up, rearrange all my books, make sure they're like in order on my bookshelf and then I could finally fall asleep. Like that's how bad it was. Um, and at some point I was like, okay, you know what? You have to stop being so quote unquote feminine because I, I mean, I was like eight or nine. Like, I viewed my cleanliness traits as being feminine and I wanted to be like the other boys. So I would start leaving dirty clothes on the floor on purpose and forcing myself not to pick them up. I would refuse to wash my hands and do all of these things because I wanted to try and be like the other boys and be masculine and be, um, fit in really you know it sounds it sounds stupid now but like at eight or nine years old i really thought that would fix my gay quote unquote so my mom raised this growing up and my mom was a huge fan of michael jackson and around i don't remember exactly when but michael jackson had that huge scandal where um he had invited a bunch of uh young boys to his mansion for like a sleepover or something or some sort of event and then one of the boys later accused him of raping raping him. Um, it turns out years after, apparently this is all like a hoax. It was planned by the boy's parents. It was a false accusation. But this was something, this was, this was something that was all over the news. And my mom told me about it. And that was the first time I heard anything about being gay. And in this particular instance, you know, as like an eight or nine year old, my mind ended up link linking Michael Jackson, gay and pedophilia. Which, you know, news alert, news flash, pedophilia and homosexuality have absolutely nothing to do with each other. You know, they should not even remotely be in the same category. Um, but as a child, I didn't know that. I didn't know any better and that I linked the two things. So it was at, at the very minimum in my mind, it was obvious that gay is bad. To be honest, I didn't, I wasn't really attracted to anything particularly Growing up, like I was pretty confused about what I was attracted to. So for example, I remember uh, on the cheese bus, I don't remember if you guys ever had the experience of having to um, ride on the yellow cheese bus to school, um, but we would do that and the cool kids would sit in the back and then there was this older boy who was like maybe 11 or 12 and he had printed out this uh, hentai picture of a woman and he was passing around to the boys in the back and of course I wanted to see too because I wanted to know like what they were all hollering about. Um, and it was just, it was just like a naked picture of a woman and all the other boys seemed mesmerized by that, 
by it. Like they couldn't stop staring at it. And I was kind of like, oh, okay. Like I just didn't really care. You know, I didn't really have an adverse reaction. I also didn't have like a favorable reaction to the picture. And it turns out that's kind of just how I feel about girls in general. I've talked to a lot of other gay guys and I found out that I'm not alone. Like a lot of other gay guys feel this way too. Like it's, um, we don't, some of us don't really feel necessarily grossed out by girls, but we're also just not really interested in girls. Like there's just, there's just a very neutral feeling towards girls. Um, so we identify as gay. Maybe that makes us bi, I don't know, but whatever. I don't think it really matters at the end of the day. But regardless, I held on to this really tightly. Um, I held on to the fact that I wasn't grossed out by girls as reasoning for me not being gay because I so badly did not want to identify as gay at this point in my life. It actually ends up a couple of years later, the first 18 plus piece of material I stumble upon my own on the web is um, gay pornography. So back then, what we would do, uh, we didn't have cell phones or smartphones, we had MP3 players and um, there was no Spotify, there was none of that, or iTunes. What you had to do was we would go on YouTube, find a song we liked, and then go on one of those like shady YouTube to MP3 player uh, download websites. So you download the YouTube as an MP3 um, file and then send it to your MP3 player and play it from there. Because I, I mean, I didn't have, my parents didn't give me cash for songs. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember this or maybe no one remembers this. So anyway, I was on one of those shady websites. Out pops this ad. And I still remember, the vibe was very like G6 filter on TikTok, it was kind of edgy. And then the song was um, Monday by the Glitch Mob. I still remember all these details. It was an ad for 18 plus gay stuff. And honestly, it really caught my attention. Like I just couldn't stop staring at it. But I knew that I had this gut feeling like, oh, you know, this is gay, this is wrong. Like, um, this is wrong, you shouldn't look at it, you shouldn't click it, but it ends up, I later revisit this website a couple times. Eventually I get enough courage to actually click the ad and it brings me to like this uh, basically uh, pay per video site and it would show the videos um, in like a gallery format. And the thing is, you know, I didn't have any money to pay for any of these videos, of course. Um, but if you hovered over the video thumbnail, if you hovered over the video thumbnail, it would play like a couple seconds of the video, sort of like a GIF, um, but those weren't really a thing then yet. So that's what I would do. I would uh, get home from school, I would click on a video, I would, cl I would try to get the ad, and then I would uh, click on the ad, go to the site, and like hover over those thumbnails. Um, <laughs> I didn't have my own cell phone growing up, so what I did instead was found a bunch of bar I really liked online, and then I printed it all out, and stuffed it under my sock drawer to hide it, so that I could um, uh, enjoy it on my own time. And I hid it really deep in my drawers. And one day, my mom noticed that I wasn't quite myself. And she thought I was on drugs. I was not on drugs. I was just a teenage boy going through puberty. Um, but she thought I was drugs. And then she started, it was in the morning. She was yelling at me. And I had to leave for school. And then she started digging through my drawer because she, she, she was you know, certain that I was hiding drugs in the house. And then I realized at that moment, shit she's gonna find it. So that's what I thought about all day at school. I was like, oh, she's gonna dig it up. What's she gonna do when she finds it? Am I gonna get kicked out of the house? Like, you know, like what, what was gonna happen to me? Um, and I get home and I see that on the top of the drawers is the bar that I had printed and she had clearly found it because she had moved it from the inside of my drawers to the top of my drawers. Um, so I knew she had found it and then all I could do now was just wait for her to get home and find out what would happen. Interesting enough, my mom gets home from work and there's not a mention. She doesn't mention, you know, all the yelling about the drugs in the morning. She doesn't mention the bar that she had dug up from my drawer. There's just not a single word about it. Thinking back now, I think my mom just needed some time to kind of figure out how she wanted to deal with the situation. Um, about a couple of days later, she asked me to help her uh, carry groceries from the store. So I go with her to uh, the supermarket and on the way to the supermarket, she asked me, Kevin, are you gay? She doesn't, she doesn't bring up the bar or anything. She just asked me that simple question. I tell her no, and I just, I never hear about it again. You know, she just lets it go from there on. I really want to thank my mom for the way she reacted to that. Um, I do think that was one of the more positive reactions I could have possibly gotten, so I want to thank her for that. Uh, so my first piece of advice is for parents. 
if you suspect that your child is gay or you pretty certain your child is gay, I recommend you pretend you don't know anything. Like don't bring it up, don't ask them. Your child will come out to you on their own time when they're ready. So I urge you to let them do it on their own time. Pretend you didn't see anything. Um, let them come out on their own time. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more, please click like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace out.